Trevor, how do you feel about being in your first Sprint Cup All-Star race? Because I know last year circumstances didn't allow you to do that because you'd have been in. But uh, patience is a virtue. So talk about being able to, uh, to line up Saturday night to try to uh, not only win the All-Star race, but grab a million dollars. That's uh, that's the plan is to go do that, but I think it makes it that much sweeter this year going into it, knowing that we were trying to run it last year and Good Sam was on board and uh, we were going to make our debut and then unfortunately I wasn't able to to, to be in the race and um, you know to have Good Sam and Camping World come back on board for round two after what happened last year that means a lot to me uh, it means that they're behind us and they want to be a part of the Wood Brothers racing team and uh, that that excites me, but. Most of all, I'm just excited to be in this all-star race. I mean, the new format, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. The short runs, uh, that seems to kind of be our forte this year anyways, is going on the short runs. Uh, last time here at Charlotte in the fall race, which is my only Sprint Cup race here, uh, we ran out of fuel running in the top five. So fortunately, there's no fuel mileage issues with 20-lap segments and then a 10-lap segment, and uh, hopefully we can keep it dialed in. All right, we'll take questions for Trevor. We'll start here with Mike and then go back to Jeff in the middle. Go ahead, Mike. MikeHembreSpeed.com. You know you could bow on that shirt too. Probably. I feel good. I need like some fire flame shoes, and I'll just be, I'll just head on over. <laughs> I like it though. I mean, I, I was kind of worried about it at first. I saw the suit on paper, and I was like, oh man, and like the back of it, it's got the good Sam and the Camping World on it, split in half instead of up and down. But we like to break the mold a little bit, anyways. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I think Marcus Lamonis, the guy from Camping World and Good Sam, designed it. So I didn't want to say anything about it. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna give him a high five when I see him. There you go. Obviously, you have to be aggressive in, in this race if you hope to have a shot, but you kind of got to be smart, too. Uh, how do you find the balance between trying to run up front for these short periods and not overdriving the car and getting in trouble? Uh, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I think you can push it because they're short enough. I think that you can push the cars. Uh, the tires don't fall off normally for us until, I mean, they fall off after about lap five, but then they don't take their big fall until lap 30, 40. You know, right there coming into a, a pit cycle is when you're sliding around and saying, man, I got to get some new tires. Um, so for us, I think that you can go after it pretty hard. Uh, those first five, ten laps are the most important of a run anyways, and it's not going to hurt you too bad if you go too hard at the beginning, I think. Um, you know, I think the strategies are going to be a lot different for this all-star race. If you win a segment early, you might try things with your car you wouldn't normally do and take that risk since you know that you're going to be at the front. Um, and if not, if you haven't won a segment, then you're going to be battling your butt off trying to get a win so that you can start at the front. Um, you know, my, my prediction is probably there'll be maybe two or three guys that win a segment. I don't know if it'll be four different winners, but it could be. Um, you know, so I think you could still have a chance to start in the top four, top three, even if you don't win a segment. But, um, you know, we, uh, we started fourth at Texas on the green-white checkered in the nationwide race, and we were able to go win that race. So with 10 laps to go, I think you could still have a shot even if you don't win a segment. Let's go back in the back uh, middle there, Trevor, and then we'll go to Woody and then this gentleman right here. Hey, Trevor. Jeff Hood of RacingToday.com. Most drivers customarily retain a third to half of the winnings from a race, and I'm assuming you're somewhere in that range with Eddie and Lynn probably. But anyway, considering um, if, if you can win this race tomorrow night, bag the million, would you consider taking your portion of the winnings to try to pick up some more races this year? Because I know you want a race running a limited schedule. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, we talked about doing that, and, and we uh, did that with Daytona. Uh, Eddie and Lynn are the kind of owners that love to be at the racetrack. Uh, that is their hobby, so it's not like they take the money and go – buy a new boat with it or something they love racing and, and they want to be a part of it and um, you know as many races as we can run uh, these funds would definitely help that if we won the race just like at Daytona in 2011 uh, we were able to add a few more races and, and I'm sure that would probably be the case here um, but you know we're, we're excited about the four races that we picked up with Camping World and Good Sam already and we're definitely looking to, to fill out the schedule a little bit more and like I said that would help. Let's go to Woody and then we'll go here in the middle of this gentleman here and then to Kenny. Go ahead. Woody came with MRN. Trevor, on the same, along the same line of thought, was just curious about if you have any more update on your nationwide schedule, filling some more of that out. Uh, not right now. I mean, my focus has been on the cup schedule pretty much full time. Um, you know, I've been trying to talk to people about that and for nationwide. I know that we're going to run the Bristol race later in the season. That's for sure with yourracecar.com. They came on for both races. And uh, as far as past that, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a lot of need in the Roush camp with uh, with Stenhouse's number six car. I know they're close to fully funding it, but they still have to pick up a few races. Matt Kenseth car, uh, 
Carl Edwards' car. So there's a lot of places that sponsors can go at Roush Fenway and the number 60 nationwide car. So, um, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. I uh, just hope we start getting some partners here soon and, and uh, keep adding on to the Wood Brothers schedule because I think that's where I need to keep focused. Uh, we've had two top tens out of four races this year, and, and that's pretty – Honorable, I guess, for our team being part-time, and uh, I'd like to just add on to that and, and keep working on it. Let's go to the gentleman right here, and then we'll go to Kenny. Go ahead, sir. How you doing? Sean Bell, Fox Charlotte. Uh, a lot of the best drivers are here this weekend. Can you tell me what separates uh, the champions from everyone else in the sport? Well, I got to go to Darlington last weekend and stand in the spotter stand and listen and watch, and I actually learned a lot. Uh, it's been a little while since I did that. And, um, you know, the biggest thing that I could tell from those guys that started at the back and worked their way forward or the guys that started at the front and stayed there was how good of leaders they were. It's just like any other sport. You know, you have your guys on teams that are leaders, and then you have some that, that don't know how to do that and can't keep their team together. Uh, when you look at Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, these kind of guys, they know how to keep their cool throughout a race, and they know how to keep their team around them. Uh, after a bad pit stop, they're not yelling at them and, and going off. They're trying to build them up and get them going again for the next stop because that's what it's all about is staying together. And uh, it's just, like I said, it's just like any other sport. So for me, I'm trying to learn how to be the best leader that I can be at 21 years old. Uh, sometimes I feel a little bit weird when I'm talking to Donnie Wingo, who's, you know, probably twice my age. I'll give him that. <laughs> I'll, I will say he's 42. I, I'm just kidding. Um, he'll, he'll like me for that. But, uh, you know, I think it's all about being a leader. And, um, you know, there's some guys on the radio that just lose their mind when, when one person gets in the way. And I, I'm sure I've been guilty of that from time to time. So uh, just by listening, I learned a lot last week. And that makes champions putting whole races together. Let's go, Kenny, and then we'll go back over here to the side. Go ahead, Kenny. Kenny Bruce, Sporting News. Trevor, not running every week. What What do you do with the time off? And when you do get to the track, do you feel like you're behind the guys that have been out there every week? Uh, I don't feel any more behind than I did when I started because I didn't have a whole lot of experience in the cup deal then. So it's kind of been a gradual progression of just getting more and more experience. But with every race, I feel like I'm catching up more and more. Um, but it is a disadvantage not to be at the racetrack every weekend for us uh, with chemistry with the guys, uh, for Donnie to know what I need in the car, which he does a great job anyways. But more races would definitely help us. If I'm you know, saying the car is a 5 out of 10 loose, then he, he'll figure out what that means the more races we run. And, um, you know, for me, I just need to get on these tracks more. I've been at this place one time in a cup car, and we were really quick, but still experience is key when, when you don't know what the track's going to do when it cools down or, um, you know, whatever you have to do to stay ahead of it. So uh, my off time, I've been going to the races. Richmond, I was there for Marcus Ambrose. Darlington, I was there to stand in the spotter stand and just trying to take advantage of it. Uh, hopefully for the next 15 years, I'll be at the racetrack every weekend racing. So every now and then you got to enjoy it too. Uh, even though it's hard because I'd rather be at the racetrack than anywhere. So um, that's pretty much it. Right here on the left. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Trevor Kenny back at WXII NBC in the Piedmont Triad. Uh, just a little bit ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. said he believes this is perhaps the only race all season where you sort of get a buy on bad behavior. If something goofy happens late in a race, you can get away with stuff that you might not normally, and, and drivers need to not have hurt feelings. Given your reputation as such a nice guy, such a likable guy, how hard will it be for you to maybe spin out somebody late if you have a chance to win that million bucks on the final restart? I think he's right. I think that's the perception of this race. You know, I think about Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin and all the stuff that went down here a couple years ago and Carl Edwards after the race hitting the – he crashed after the race. So, you know, if you're going to crash for the win, I don't, I don't know if there's a big issue with it. But myself, I'd rather just lead every lap and win it and not have to worry about it. Uh, that'd be nice. But – um, you know, you, you can definitely get away with more here. I would say that he's right on that. Um, the fans are looking for it. I think NASCAR likes it, and, and the drivers know it's coming uh, because there's no points on the line. Not saying they wouldn't be mad if you crashed them. I think they'd still be pretty ticked off. But uh, there's, there's a lot of money on the line. And uh, this is kind of how we race every weekend, though, because we don't run for points. We just run to race for wins. And so now they're kind of playing on our court a little bit, and we're looking forward to it.